today's episodes of Real Roads Online. We're going to talk to you a little bit about a classification yard and a hump yard. You're going to see how I set some stuff up on my test server, and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are getting ready to back into our uh, hump yard here. I've got a special line that runs down straight into where the, the default spawning yard is. So we're going to take a look at that and um, I'll get a little closer. Right now, uh, since I'm running this by myself, I'm going to go ahead and do the best I can. Uh, this is typically, I would say, maybe a three-person job to do it comfortably, depending on how big your yard is. Um, but we're going to go ahead and put this in reverse... Give it a little kickstart. Get us some time built up to get to where we need to go. Bump here. It's going. Go ahead. Two rag on there to get it rolling. And it's a little bit too fast. So what I'm going to do here is slow it down. Um, I'm just going to crank the brake just for a second. It's actually not too bad of a speed for a yard. It's going to pick up a little bit of a pace as it goes. And yeah, let's start there. That's good. Nice, easy to control. Um, if the cars go too fast, they'll catch up to each other really quickly. It can get kind of messy. So over here, um, let's get her toes crushed by the boxcar. Uh, over here, I put Betsy White and a couple of hand cars. Make sure the brake is on at the end of the line. I've got the brake on full. Brake on full. This will just stop the cars. Since I'm solo, um, that's all I have to do to continue doing this. Uh, I am. A second uh, as this continues down the shunting lane um, see this particular line goes into well here's the spawning yard on this line and this is the um, separation lane the hump yard as it comes in and as the spawning yard I've got it going on a couple separate tracks um, just fall right into place here so as it's rolling backwards Again, it's in neutral power. Once I get the, the speed going, um, it should start rolling back. I'll probably get two or three cars, maybe a little bit more to separate. And I've come in here, and I've put these at a very steep angle. I believe it was about 8% on this side and 10% on this side. 8% um, isn't enough to split it, but you'll see as the car falls onto the 10%, that's when it'll break apart. So as it hits this side of the ramp, that 10% will will snap at the difference between the two of them. The first things you want to do as they as they come up is to put the pin in. That way it's ready to connect from the front of the vehicle. Um, and you can do that after they break off on the second spark. So here you can see, let's keep an eye on the connectors. Goes up and snaps off right there. So there it's rolling off, goes up, put a pin in here goes up and snaps off goes up and snaps off nice so it's just going to roll down to the end of my yard and then turn around and come back putting these pins in so it makes it easier to connect i always put them in the front of the car whichever you prefer as long as you know it's easier just to maintain one side or the other you can see right here is where it breaks out boom and we're going to start losing some speed on these other cars here i don't know if they're going to make it over i actually got more than i thought i would um, so yeah, we'll just go with what I got here. Since I don't have an engineer, uh, driving the train, the train kind of gets hung up and you need to put a little more power into it, uh, as it rolls forward. But let's put the brakes on here for just a second. As these cars start rolling in, you can see them 
wandering down. I've got a 60, it's either 60 or 66 degree turn looping around in here. That gives me a little bit of time to come in and sort everything out. Um, some cars, as you see, are slower than others. This this one with the short uh, trucks on it, the wheel the wheel distance is able to fly through this much faster than the other cars. So as we roll in here, let's say I want to put this onto the back of Betsy White. Roll on this line, and it'll just do its thing down to the end you'd have ideally you'd have another person down the other end of the yard snapping the connections as they came in but you got to keep some distance between the cars this is why the speed is important um, you can see here these two are connected and we've got an issue with this coming too fast so let's just tap the brakes on this for a second I may have already missed it uh, and we're going to send this all the way down to the end. I... So let's put it on the left lane. So this left. And then we'll hurry up and send this down the next to the last lane. So as soon as these cross. You need to have that distance again. This is going to be really tight. Let's see if I can make it. I have to get it before that oil car gets here and after that gets on there. Uh, uh, right now it's close okay I'm going to go ahead and snap these two together since they're close and then so on and so on you would just come in uh, the weight of the cars will probably make a difference right now the weight isn't uh, adjusted into the game but you get the idea and hand cars with the brakes on should be enough to slow this momentum down it might push it a little bit if it's going too fast and again it just gives us a, a, a temporary buffer or barrier to to bounce our equipment off of that space so here let's see this is going to push it a little bit and stop so right here we'll come boom 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 as the other cars come in you can line them up connect them connect them connect them and throw the brakes on the last first and last couple of cars on your line Thing with these oil tankers i think when the weight comes in it may really try to push the hand cart but again ideally you'd have somebody riding the car and hit the brakes where they want it in the first two or three cars and then everything else will just fall in line behind it so there we go the brakes stopped it it's actually going to send it back the other direction a little bit um, sometimes it'll bounce off yeah. i've got both of my wheels backwards here but that's not a problem And occasionally they move on their own. Um, great. So, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, as it says. Now it's not moving. It'll make it easier to sort out later, though. All the work you put in here will, will make a difference. Start rolling forward a little bit. Put some power on. Just enough to get us over that bump. Tanker to snap off here. Three, two, one. take a look put the brakes on again might not have had the momentum no there it goes okay we're good so I already put my pin on from before we're good to go check the back just to make sure yep yeah, right. that's moving I can go ahead and let's sort out our coal or ore cars off. I take this off just to be safe. Bump. About 23 to 28% seem to be a 
decent backup speed. Sure, our cool cars break apart. This is actually pretty fast, really. That's too fast. These other ones are going to come moving really quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to hit stop. The pressure keeps building up. And then we've got issues. Okay, that's going to be pretty close there. Now our train's running away. You definitely need two to three people to do this correctly. <clears throat> well, coal cars get past. Worked out well. This needs to break, 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 break. Oh, boom. I didn't mess it up too badly. Except for my train running away, and yeah, I just derailed this, so... Yeah, there we go. So, how not to run a hop yard by yourself by Aileron Designs, and we will catch you guys on the next episode.